I just copped the cheapest fakes on the internet. I'm talking real cheap. I scored a pair of Yeezy slides for just $1.50, some Yeezy foam runners for $2, off-white Jordan 5s and Air Force One mid for less than 13 bucks, and a bunch of other kicks that should have cost me hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And the crazy thing is these budget fakes are far from embarrassing, quite the opposite actually. They're pretty damn well made. I mean, I saw the pics of these kicks on some sketchy Chinese website that normally caters to locals and I couldn't resist the urge to order a few pairs just to see if they're really that good. Hey guys, I'm in New York City just hanging out. This is a new video after the red pill of almost perfect pairs that shocked people a year or two ago. It's not really the case anymore and everyone is aware of that. So now we're moving on to the next level. Those fakes we mentioned that cost less than a taco or even less than a McFlurry. If somebody tells you about a Jordan 1 for $9, you're bound to expect something completely disastrous and that's normal. We've been too used to seeing them at $180 or even worse at $1,500 and that makes it hard to believe. Leave, yet we all know that they cost absolutely nothing to manufacture. Whether it's the Jordan 1 mid from the corner or the latest collab with Travis Scott, we all know that these shoes are produced for pennies in Asia. But it's definitely stronger than us because we've been brainwashed. Even I have this anchoring bias where after always seeing plastic made shoes from China sold for over $100, it became a normal price and when I stumbled across this sketchy site, I was almost convinced that I would receive completely shameful products. From what I understand, it seems to be a massive clearance sale of fakes that apparently no one wanted to buy. So they're selling them to us at factory prices, but even so, the prices are so insane that there's bound to be a little hesitation. At the same time, when you're faced with an Air Force One mid off-white for 90 yuan, which is about $13, or Reebok Instapump Furies for 6 bucks, you can only expect to receive some major crap, but that's not what we got at all. The first pair was an off-white dunk that I paid a little less than $11 for, and it's probably the worst fake I ever received. The interior padding is pretty messed up, the pair smells terrible, the finishing touches are clearly not up to par, and you can tell it was definitely produced in a rush. But overall, the replica is pretty well respected. It's definitely not what I would call a shameful fake. All the details are present and in the right places. It's just not as clean as the real thing. It definitely feels cheap, but clearly for 11 bucks, it's not that bad. To balance things out, here is one of the best fakes we've gotten today, the Jordan 3 Desert Elephant, which we paid just $13 for. The pair is quite hefty, but that's to be expected since it is a size 13, which was the only size that was left. But once you have it in your hands, it's really not that bad at all. The quality is downright impressive for the price, and beyond that of a good fake, it looks to be a great pair of shoes. The inside is nice and fluffy, you can tell that your feet will feel comfortable in there. As far as the shape, patches, and colors go, it's almost perfect, even though some of you diehard sneakerheads might notice a few imperfections. Personally, if I saw somebody wearing these shoes, I wouldn't suspect for a second that they were fake, especially $13 fake. However, the leather does seem to be a bit thinner than that of the real deal. You can tell that it's a slightly cheaper version, but again, for 13 bucks, it's just not good. It is insane. Damn. Crazy. <laughs> not quite as successful this time, we got a pair of Bapesters that we paid $12 for, and overall they don't look cheap at all. I'm pushing it a bit, but they're even better finished than the Air Force Ones that I dropped 160 bucks on at Nike. But let's not even talk about that. This is an explosive area of conversation. However, the leather is totally messed up compared to the real ones, which have wider and less visible embossing, but that's also much more harmonious. You can definitely feel that the quality of materials is quite far from what you would expect from a genuine Bapesta that costs 300 bucks. The shape is a bit bulkier on the fake, and of course, when it's a knockoff of a product that is supposed to be more premium, the difference is a little bit more apparent. And for that matter, this one is not even as well done as the off-white dunks when it comes to replicating the details, but in terms of finish and quality, there's not much to say. It's on par with most Nike, Adidas, or Puma kicks that you could find in a store. 
The next pair is the most expensive one, and it's a Dunk Low worth $27. This one wasn't on sale or anything, it's available all year round in all colors and sizes at the same price. I just brought it to show you that the experience of selling a fake dunk on a resale site does not necessarily require paying $150 bucks for a dunk. It was mostly out of respect for the suckers who were going to receive the pair, but also to not encourage you to do the same. In reality, you can clearly see that a dunk that costs $27 works just as well. The shape, details, and finishes are all on par with a real one, and clearly no one can tell that it's a fake. And once again, I don't want to snitch, but there are people who paid over $300 for dunks that were less well made than our fake. There are no loose threads or giant globs of glue on the pair, and clearly we could have used this fake for our shady experiments just as easy. <laughs> The next pair is the Air Force One Mid Off-White. That bad boy is giving me a headache. There are details everywhere. We don't even know where to look. So is it a good fake or not? I don't know. You tell me. What's for sure is that it's not in the top five best off-white collabs. Are we really surprised that it ends up on sale even for fake enthusiasts? Not really. Apparently, you could even grab it for less than 10 bucks for the same quality at one point. Let's be real. This pair was a flop from start to finish. For us, it costs 12 to 30 bucks and honestly once it's in your hand the pair isn't as bad as you might think. I just think that the twisted soul in Mihara Yashura style was a bit too much but the rest is pretty cool and it looks much better in person. It's especially the colors that are quite unconventional but of course you appreciate it differently when it costs you less than 15 bucks. Otherwise what I received seems pretty honest in terms of quality finishes and reproduction of details and it's still far from being shameful. Plus since nobody really pays attention to this pair, I don't think anyone would even realize it's fake if they saw it being worn in the streets. So we're sticking with Off-White, this time the Jordan 5 Off-White sale, which is still quite popular. We bought it from the same seller as the Jordan 3 for less than $14, and once again, it's very well done. However, you will notice that we don't have zip ties on any of our Off-White pairs, and that's not the fake seller's fault, but the fault of the people who sent us the package. We asked them to remove the packaging to pay less for shipping, and the person who handled it probably thought the zip tie was part of the packaging. So they cut them off and threw them all away. Come on, man. Other than that, the pair is in great condition, the shape is similar to the real one, and the material game is on point. The colors may be slightly different, but typically after wearing them for two to three months, that kind of a difference isn't really noticeable anymore. It's a complex pair, and it's really not that easy to imitate identically. I still think that the tongue is less rigid than the real one, that the plastic-like material that covers the pair is also not exactly the same as the real one, and the embroidery could have been better managed. The jump man is definitely plump, but there's nothing that immediately catches the eye. Obviously, if you were to compare it to a real one, you would notice the difference pretty quickly. But I think once you wear it on the street, it's well enough imitated that nobody will notice. And we are talking about a $15 fake pair. Alright, alright, time for the one everybody's been waiting for, the $2 Yeezy Foam Runners. Well, clearly we're dealing with a foam runner here, it's a piece of plastic just like the real foam runner. It's flexible where it needs to be and rigid in the sole, the details are in the right place and the shape is identical. I mean, for real, it's not even close, I'm convinced it's literally the same crap as the real thing but at factory prices. The same goes for the Yeezy slides, I was expecting them to be some flimsy piece of plastic that moves all around in all directions, but not even close. In terms of rigidity and sensations, I don't feel any major differences. Of course, it's probably not the exact same plastic and you certainly don't have the algae mix going on with the foam runner. But in terms of product feel, I guarantee you can't tell the difference. After all, the ultimate question with this kind of a fake is, will it wear out faster? That's another question we can definitely answer in a future video if you're down for it. Just let us know in the comments. 
We saved the best for last, the Jordan 1 Soulfly Art Base, so we pay only 9 bucks for. Obviously, given the price, you can imagine it's not the best, the opposite of that actually. It's probably in the top 2 worst pairs we've received along with the off-white dunks. At least this time, they did not throw away the little Jordan charm like they did with the off-white. And we even got the extra laces, damn we're spoiled. But everything else on the pair is ultra cheap, the leather feels like a tire, even the sole isn't exactly the same. And there is a smell of mixed petroleum and paint. It's really something. I'd rather smell Nakado Avocado's ass after he's eaten three pounds of cheesy ramen than smell this pair. You know what? Forget I said anything. So what's the moral of the story here? Well, for starters, we're getting completely ripped off on the prices. Except for the Jordan 1 for $9, which is a bit too worn out, and the Bapesta. Most of the pairs we showed you have materials, production origins, and finishes that are more or less similar or even identical to those of authentic products. The other moral is that honestly having pairs this easy and cheap kind of ruins the sneaker experience. Let's not kid ourselves, even if the product is more or less the same, it's less exciting, you know? You also have to realize that these prices are pretty exceptional. They're originally just fake clearance items sold on the streets of Shenzhen. They were not supposed to end up in my hands. Don't worry though, the price of your real sneakers is partially justified by many other expenses that real companies have to pay. So while the sneaker industry is fraudulent, it's not that bad. Also, I'm giving the price for Chinese buyers, but you have to factor in the shipping for us, and it cost me almost 200 bucks to send these 10 pairs together. Although I do admit I paid more because I had asked for express shipping in the beginning. I was supposed to receive them in two weeks, well it arrived in one and a half months. Anyways, it was still fun to see the crazy stuff we could get at dirt cheap prices, like the Yeezy Foam Runner or the Yeezy Slides for less than $2. It still traumatized me a bit, but what do you think of these dirt cheap fakes? Yeah, she gon' sue my way, yeah, just like an eight, yeah, and eat